So yes, we are the team uh, formerly known as Arts and Elder Care, um, going by Welderly today, perhaps Artful Aging tomorrow, uh, Silver is the new gold, uh, we'll see. But uh, wanted to capture uh, sort of the expanding or the expansion of what this could be. Um, you know, you've met uh, all of our team and we've met our obligations to get to over 70 uh, interviews. Um, our team is actually a little bit larger. We've had advisors, uh, we've had great uh, help uh, from our mentors. Um, but going a little bit deeper into the problem, uh, again, uh, the demographics are uh, sadly in our favor, uh, that we're a rapidly graying uh, society. Uh, and uh, this is really led by California uh, and uh, by the Bay Area. And so by 2050, we'll have two million uh, individuals over the age 65 in this area alone. Our archetypes, the, the people that we're trying to serve, uh, essentially it's a two-sided marketplace. We're trying to not only help uh, my patients, caregivers, uh, but also help the folks that are going to care for those caregivers. Uh, currently, the way that these services are applied to an individual uh, involves uh, so much hassle and mess uh, that uh, uh, sadly something that uh, you've heard me talk about, a lot of people have done research on, our caregivers oftentimes uh, pass before our patients. Uh, the burden of caregiving is a disease itself. Uh, and, and we think that uh, we can maybe help out with some of that caregiver burden relief uh, through developing a digital platform. Uh, in the journey of this class, uh, we started out with, uh, like uh, so many others, a very busy business uh, model canvas. Uh, and uh, with the help of uh, um, the team leaders, uh, the, the course directors, uh, started to focus uh, a lot on our key partners I uh, had some real pivotal uh, interviews. Uh, um, I learned actually a lot about the burdens of the social workers that I deal with on uh, uh, a daily basis. Um, there are over seven folks that are covering actually a relatively few amount of physicians. We're doubling uh, our physicians just this year. Uh, and they're overwhelmed uh, and they're always attacking the problem on an individual level. And so this was something that they loved the idea of being able to sort of uh, push some of this off onto the patient and the caregiver or to help them uh, uh, to help guide them through the process. Um, by week three, uh, we kept hearing from some of our classmates, uh, you know, who would pay for this. And so um, we, we started looking into uh, deeper into our revenue streams uh, and started sort of interviewing uh, uh, different individuals that might help us understand, you know, how much would they be interested in this kind of service. Uh, and uh, we were struck by the amount of freelancers who said, you know, look, you know, I'm, I'm a potter, you know, that's, that's my passion. I, I don't want to have to work as a, a waiter or a waitress to make money to cover for my studio time. What if I could provide services that I love doing uh, to an, an audience that would love me providing this service? Um, and then just so many caregivers that have had this sort of, you know, constant uh, uh, difficulty with the fact that our patients are moving targets. Uh, and so that's something that was right for them uh, two or three months ago. Uh, they may be kicked out of, they may have graduated, it may not be right for them uh, in the future. And this could provide them uh, with a way to sort of see the future and try and select activities that would match uh, that individual. By week six, we were still hearing from a lot of our classmates who would pay for this. And so uh, we kept on uh, getting interviews back from uh, healthy elders, um, you know, other partners about, um, you know, how much they are always sort of, you know, paying for these services, engaging in these services. In fact, it's a, a clinical recommendation that we all make to our patients and, and caregivers uh, to be active and engaged um, outside of the clinic. Uh, by week nine, uh, we were really starting to sort of consolidate things. I was uh, in D.C. for the Alzheimer Association International Conference and racked up over 12 interviews, uh, including uh, a potential funder, uh, uh, the uh, director of the National Center for uh, Creative Aging. Um, uh, uh, was very interested in, in what we were offering. Uh, she had just attended the White House, uh, White House uh, uh, Summit on aging and said, you know, your timing couldn't be any better, uh, that this is exactly what they were talking about, the kinds of solutions that uh, we needed. And she said there weren't any academic partners. There were very few that were there. And so many people were worried about the commercialization uh, of the elderly. And she said, you guys could offer, you know, the heart, the piece that really is caregiving uh, related to that. And so our solution uh, is to build this ecosystem where we populate it with vendors, uh, we give consumers choices, uh, and then we generate revenues through targeted ads uh, and through uh, third, uh, bundling third party um, uh, groups uh, with the additional validation piece, the addition of being able to say what my patients liked. So like Netflix, if you like this movie, you might like this movie. 
if you like this service, if you have this condition, it might be the right service for you. And so we put together some sort of glossy photos for what the MVP uh, sort of interface could look like, uh, and even how somebody could use it to search for an activity, find an activity that they want to look for, um, and then go even deeper to see if they had Parkinson's, maybe it's not the right choice for them. If they had mild cognitive impairment, maybe it is the right choice for them. Uh, and so now we get to the, the end of our uh, production, the decision, and in this case, wanted to switch it up a bit. And so Zach has told you about the problem, our journey here, and the solution that we envision. And we're excited to say that we are moving forward with this and that we are excited to take on this challenge. And there are a few key reasons why we are so excited about this. One is the team that we have. We as a founding team can get this off the ground without having to bring on any additional resources. The other reason is our go-to-market strategy that we've been fleshing out here. And it's the partners that we can build this with that gets us really excited about this. It's going to the Memory and Aging Center and being able to be confident that their patients are going to be using this platform when Zach, as their physician, tells them to go engage in an activity. And we can partner with cultural institutions here in San Francisco that already have a lot of these activities, the De Young, the Jewish Cultural Museum. And so that's how we're going to initially populate this two-sided marketplace. One of the key issues with two-sided marketplaces is how do you get your original content? This is how we go about doing it. And then we believe that we'll be able to get the freelancers on there and the third parties engaged in this, as Zach was alluding to. And that is how our uh, business model functions. It is a commission-based system uh, in line with the on-demand economy. We won't go through the numbers, but we're fleshing out what our commission rate would be. And we are excited, uh, I'll close up in, with a 10 second uh, spiel just to say that we're trying to raise $300,000 in seed funding that would be split into two tranches of 150 each and then going for our Series A in the year. So we're thrilled to be taking this on and want to thank all of you for your uh, active engagement in this, the mentors that were instrumental, Elise and Michael, and the teaching uh, staff. Thanks again. Thank you.